Full Circle Fitness is sponsored by Circle Health Complete Connected Care. Hello and welcome to Full Circle Fitness, where we bring you the clinicians and experts from our network at Lowell General Hospital and Circle Health to provide you with health and wellness information that can help you and your family live a healthy and happy life. My name is Will Courtney and I'll be your host. On today's show, we are going to take a closer look at a centuries-old practice that's being in a new, used in a new and unique way. Sarah Thibodeau, a labor and delivery nurse and certified yoga instructor, teaches a class every Sunday at Lowell General Hospital on prenatal yoga. Yes, that's yoga for pregnant women. How does it work? What are the benefits? We'll be right back with Sarah to learn more and watch her demonstrate some of the key breaths and movements that can help pregnant women. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We're here with Sarah Thibodeau. Sarah, thanks for coming. We're sitting in our, on our mats here for uh, a little yoga talk and demonstration uh, that Sarah's going to help us with. Yep. Uh, but first, I thought I'd let you introduce yourself and tell us a little more about uh, how you found yoga and what you do. All right. So um, again, it's Sarah Thibodeau, and um, I am a yoga instructor um, and a labor and delivery nurse here at Lowell General. Um, I've been doing yoga for many years now. I started, took my very first yoga class in 2000, my senior year of college. Um, and I've been doing yoga little by little everywhere I've lived ever since then. Um, I really found a home recently at a studio locally called Sutra Studio in Lowell that um, inspired me to actually become a yoga teacher. And since I've also been a labor and delivery nurse for nine years, it was a, such a natural fit for me to want to incorporate yoga into um, a prenatal yoga class. I also used to teach childbirth education, so I love teaching new parents, new moms, um, and helping them find ways to be more comfortable during pregnancy, during labor, and definitely in the postpartum period. Too. Yeah, okay. And so what was it that when you first found yoga, how did you get hooked? That's a good question. Um, it felt like such a natural thing for me. Um, I was never somebody who was super athletic, but I always enjoyed being outside. I enjoyed um, movement. I liked dancing. Um, and somehow yoga incorporated all of those things for me. It just helped me feel grounded. It helped me move with breath, which is, uh, and also in a graceful way, which I think is what I love about dancing as well. Um, not that I'm a dancer, but. <laughs> um, and I think what also drew me to it was that it wasn't just physical. It was really about incorporating health into the body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you teach vinyasa, is that the, the style? Can you tell us yes. a little bit what vinyasa is and sure. maybe how that compares to other styles? Sure, so, um, so yes, I primarily teach vinyasa yoga. Um, there are many different styles of yoga, 
but vinyasa is um, a style that links asanas or yoga postures together so and you also flow with your breath through a sequence um, you certainly can stop and focus on a pose but it connects movement and breath in a way um, that some other styles don't and um, it's a little is it a little less maybe physically imposing maybe as some of the you hear not about necessarily the, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, definitely you can have a very vigorous and difficult vinyasa class but you can also slow it down quite a bit yoga can be kind of anything you make it which is one of the things that I love about it well and that's something we were talking about before the show is about how really you go to a yoga class and you don't you, you're not seeing all these long lean uh, 20-somethings it's really people of all ages right. all fitness levels uh, it, it and it seems to be something you can sort of make out what you want you don't have to be the person who's uh, on one arm, sort of balanced right. in the middle of the room. <laughs> right, exactly. And, you know, one of the things that I love about a yoga class that makes me feel really comfortable is when I look around and see people of all body types and all ages and all abilities doing yoga in their way. And I always stress that at the beginning of, especially my prenatal classes, that um, one of the huge benefits of it is that it helps you connect to your body. It's really your practice. And so you can take what you like and leave aside the rest. You can modify poses. And I always try to offer modifications to make things work for people. Um, and once you've been doing yoga for a little while, you really get to know what your body likes and what feels good. And it's important, especially to pregnant moms, um, to really Find your edge, definitely work up a sweat, mm -hmm. but don't do anything that causes sharp pain or that really tips over into um, super discomfort. You want to kind of back away a little bit from that, but that's a good rule for all of us too. But again, and listen to your body and to what exactly. it's telling you. Um, so when we talk about prenatal yoga, um, you might think, well, geez, going into these positions, you've got precious cargo there you don't want to uh, and and it's already sort of probably physically challenging I can't say I know personally but yes, it is. <laughs> uh, it, uh, so what what is the idea of it and and um, how is it maybe different than other yogas so um, prenatal yoga um, really anybody can do yoga and pregnant women who already have a yoga practice can usually continue in their yoga practices with some special modifications um, and it's always a good idea to seek out the instruction of a yoga teacher and tell them you're pregnant um, but if if women have never done yoga before it's still really a great way to get fit and stay active during pregnancy um, it's great to wait until usually after the first trimester if you have no yoga experience, just because most of the time um, you feel really tired and not as well during the first trimester. What you probably need is rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's good to avoid things like deep twists in the first trimester. Mm -hmm. But second trimester and beyond is a great time to start a prenatal yoga practice. Prenatal yoga um, can allow a woman to not only connect with her body, connect with her baby, but it can increase flexibility, it can increase strength, and, and I always focus on areas of the body that are particularly troublesome for pregnant women, like the low back, um, like swelling in the ankles, in the legs, um, fatigue in the legs is a big problem, um, arm strength, that becomes really important when you're carrying a baby around for 20 hours a day maybe, yeah. or hopefully a little less than that, yeah. um, after the baby's born too. Um, so well, now would, I would think afterward, you know, it's, you've gone through quite a bit. Um, how quickly can you get back to this after you've had a baby? 
That's a great question. So um, just like most exercise routines, you wanna wait about six to eight weeks afterwards. Generally, that's the time when you have a follow-up appointment with your OB provider, your doctor, your midwife, and they will then clear you at that time to say you can go back to your normal exercise routine. Safe to say that if you've had a, a C-section, that might be More extended. on the eight weeks. Okay. More on the eight weeks But even weeks after eight weeks, you can... Typically, you can. Yeah, unless it's been more complicated. Uh, the other part I just thought might be worth sort of helping people understand is I think when you talk about um, connecting with your baby, connecting with your mm. mind, uh, or your own body, uh, what does that mean to you? And what, mm. you know, in terms of... Um, People yeah. might see it as a sort of ethereal, yeah. spiritual thing, yeah, but it yeah. really is. You, you kind of feel everything a little bit more when you quiet yeah. everything down. Yeah, yeah. You know, I relate it especially, um, I think it's particularly useful when you are stressed to feel a connection. Um, and, of course, there's plenty of stress when you go into labor, when you have a baby, and in the first, you know, year afterwards when you're dealing with a newborn. Yeah. Wow. Um, so... One of the things that is super helpful is for women to feel like they have some tools that they can use when that anxiety creeps up. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as actually being able to inhabit your body and not let your mind spin kind of out of control. Breathing techniques that you can use um, to just bring yourself back to the space. Breathing techniques can have physical effects that lower your heart rate, which definitely has effects on your, you know, your mental processes as well. So they really influence each other, mm -hmm. the mental, the physical, um, and it's a great way to keep those things in balance and not let anxiety and stress get out of control. And so we want to show people uh, a little of that in, in a few minutes here, but I wanted to briefly ask about your class at Lowell General. Yeah. Um, so you do that every Sunday? So that is a Sunday class. It runs from 1 p.m. to 2.15. Um, it runs in six-week sessions, and um, that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so how long is the class, each class? The class is about an hour and 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and we always start with some simple breath work, which pranayama, which is a technique that is a yoga technique and is really, really helpful for women in labor, like breathing techniques have been forever. Um, mm -hmm. And then we move through a physical vinyasa sequence modified for pregnant women, and we end with a deep relaxation, a shavasana at the end, um, which is your final resting pose. It's so important to rest and honor your need for rest when you're pregnant. So we always focus on that at the end. And just to clear up any maybe potential misconceptions, when you, the, women don't come out of this exhausted or full of, of full sweat or... Right, right. So, so the idea is that, yes, you have a workout. You feel that physicality. You do sweat. Mm -hmm. But at the end, you restore all of that energy back into your body with your relaxation. And generally speaking, after Shavasana, people get up, they wake themselves up a little bit by breathing deeply a few times, and they feel a big burst of energy after yeah. that. Well, now, so you were going to, we've got a model here today who's going to show us, uh, you're yes, going to show us do. a few of the moves, but um, we're sitting here. What, what are we, what pose are we in again? We are in Sukhasana, or easy seated pose. Okay. And <laughs> uh, you're going to show me a little pranayama. Yes. So um, what better way to talk about pranayama than to just <laughs> practice a little? And sure. you've graciously agreed to sit on the floor with me. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, so a couple of real simple techniques. So when we practice pranayama, you can sit in a chair, but sitting on the floor feels so natural for me, and it's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. We can do, we can start with some cooling breaths. This technique, it's not just for pregnant women, but it works really well when you're actually in active labor. It's very hot. You're working really hard when you're in active labor, and you need something to focus on. So I'll describe it first. You inhale through your nose, and then you exhale through your mouth, and you do some nice deep breaths here. We can actually close our eyes when we do it, okay. if you want. You can rest so. your hands in your lap. You're in a perfect position, Will. So you can just take a nice deep inhale through your nose, pause at the top, and then exhale, sigh it through the mouth. Let's do it again. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. One more time. Deep inhale. And an exhale. 
And then you can blink your eyes open. And essentially, if you're looking to feel a little more relaxed and with sort of in with the good air, out with the bad air. Right? Exactly. Focus your energy, cool yourself off a little mm -hmm. bit. And this is uh, something you'll end with as well. That's we we you usually breathe start. Throughout, right? Yeah, you breathe throughout. Well, there's different techniques for the beginning and the end. Okay. I like to begin our, my yoga practice with some breaths, and in the middle of a practice, when it gets really kind of hard and my body's like, oh, this pose is hard. I tend to say, all right, everybody, let's take a deep breath together and mm -hmm. just refocus. And so sort of relating that to a woman who might be having a contraction or something that's yep. sort of that, bring that tool in. It's a natural thing that happens when women have contractions. They mm -hmm. inhale through their nose and exhale through their mouth. And if you can bring your attention to that and know that that's helping you in cooling everything down, it does really help. It takes your focus off of what's really happening yep, there. Exactly. Um, great. Well, let's uh, let's bring out Eva, Eva, right. excuse me, and uh, demonstrate a few moves. But thank you so All much. Right. Perfect. We'll thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So we are going to begin our yoga practice. We can start with our hands in our Samastitihi prayer position, and just start to ground into our feet. We're going to move first into mountain pose which um, we can build from the ground up. So palms can face forward. Feet can ground into the floor or the earth. You can pick up your toes here and ground into the ball under your big toe, your pinky toe, and your heel. And then spread your toes out, fanning them out. Legs are active, but knees are not locked. So a little looseness in your knees. Pelvis can tilt just a little forward and back to find a nice centering spot. There's a tendency of pregnant women to have a sway back position. So you wanna just tilt your pelvis slightly down so your tailbone is tucked. Palms come forward. We can inhale shoulders to the ears, really exaggerate it, and then exhale. <sighs> Hands come down, shoulders away from the ears. Crown of the head is just picking up towards the ceiling. Just emphasizing good posture here, which is so helpful in pregnancy. Then we can inhale, hands overhead. Exhale, hands towards the floor. Hands can land on blocks here, and I can set you up with some nice blocks to land your hands on. You can let your back relax down a little bit here. You can actually allow your hands to come to elbows and hang in a rag doll posture if that feels good. Kind of swaying a little side to side. A nice bend in your knees here. This emphasis is all on your back. You can then bring your hands to rest on your knees or on your shins. Inhale to a flat back kind of position and then exhale to fold down, landing your hands somewhere, the floor or the blocks. Inhale, exhale. <sighs> hands are now gonna come to frame the foot, step the right leg back into a low lunge kind of position. Wiggle your foot to make sure it's right under the knee, just checking your alignment, which is so important um, in, in prenatal yoga. Hands can start on the hips, bring the focus back to your pelvis and just tilt it down, just like we did in the mountain pose. And then inhale, hands overhead. Breathing here, moving that breath. One more inhale. Exhale to your goddess arms. Goddess arms are a strengthening pose. This helps build muscle here for baby holding and everything else. Hands come to prayer position, thumbs press into the chest. Keep those palms glued together. Inhale, hands overhead. Exhale to those goddess arms. One more time, hands to prayer position. And then hands can frame the front foot. And you can step back into a tabletop position. So you can bring your hands to the floor. You can move the blocks to the side if that feels good. Check your alignment once again here. Wrists should be right under elbows, knees right under hips. We can move through some cat and cow movements. So you can inhale, drop your belly. 
exhale round like an angry cat as much as you can inhale drop your belly down exhale round like an angry cat just warming up the spine a little bit move with your breath move in your own way one more time and then we'll come to a neutral spine step your right foot out to the side landing your the sole of your foot on the floor walk your hands back and come on up to hands on the waist inhale left hand up to the ceiling and crawl your right hand down your leg for a side stretch breathe here opening that side body making room between your ribs as your belly expands you have less room to take a deep breath and this can help with that one more inhale and then exhale reach your hand down to the floor right hand reaches up overhead and again focus on your breathing here opening up that side body one more inhale stay for the exhale and then open your heart up towards the ceiling keeping that heart nice and wide open one more breath here hand comes to your waist and you gently come back up to this triangle knee stand position walk your hands back out to a tabletop and then you can step your feet gently towards your hands taking your time and coming back to a forward fold inhaling to that flat back using the blocks if you want exhale to fold and then with a little bend in your knees gently inhale all the way to standing arms sweep overhead hands to prayer samastitihi this is our modified sun salutation which is one of the building blocks in a vinyasa sequence we'll do the other side inhale hands overhead exhale to fold inhale flat back hands on blocks or knees exhale fold once again and now we're going to step the left foot back to that lunge take your time checking your alignment scooting that ankle right under the knee perfect hands can begin on the waist tilt that pelvis just a little bit and inhale hands overhead open your heart here again and then goddess arms building strength feeling that strength prayer position keep those hands glued together as you inhale overhead goddess arms again frame the front foot come back to that tabletop position we can this time we can just take the left foot step it out to the side and walk up to our <laughs> to our um, triangle knee stand position with your hands on your hips take your time here inhale right hand overhead crawl those left fingertips down your leg and stretch out that right side side body feeling the ribs opening up creating space inhale and then exhale you can bring your hand right hand down to the floor sweep your left arm overhead create space on the other side inhale stay for the exhale and then open your heart up to the ceiling hand comes back to your waist and gently come back to your standing position from here come back to your tabletop position we're going to set ourselves up for a malasana squat position so you're going to take one block and put it in a nice reachable place for you um, and then what we can do, there's a couple ways to do this, but we can just come to our feet and come to a squatting position. So toes can point out or they can be straight, whatever is comfortable. And you can start to move towards sitting on your block. And you can use your hands on the floor to get there. Take your time. <laughs> Perfect, you got it. This is a great position for pregnant women. It's one that many pregnant women actually have an easier time with. <laughs> Palms press together. Your elbows can actually press against your knees just a little bit here if you want to um, increase that space. 
crown of the head reaches up towards the ceiling. We do a lot of hip opening um, in prenatal yoga. It's very helpful when you're in labor, etc. One more inhale and exhale. You can kind of lean your weight forward, bring your hands down to the floor, and come up into a nice wide forward fold here. I'm gonna scoot this block out of the way. I'll do the same for you. <laughs> you can grab your elbows and just let yourself hang in a rag doll here. This is a great position to just let your back stretch out. And then one more time, bend your knees and very slowly, gently inhale all the way up to standing. Hands to prayer. We're gonna come right down to a child's pose now. So in child's pose, I'm gonna have you come down to your knees. Knees are gonna come nice and wide. We're gonna set a block up here. Um, sit back towards your heels, walk your hands forward, and your forehead is gonna come towards the floor or a block or even something higher like a bolster if you need to. Once you get here, settle down into that space. Allow your hips to drop towards your heels and just close your eyes and breathe. Gently walk your hands back a little bit, coming out of that. You can bring your, just sit on your knees for a moment. We're gonna do a twist with a bolster. Um, so what I'm gonna do, Eva, is I'm gonna have you sit on your hip with your feet out to the side. Perfect. I'm gonna set this bolster up right against your hip. And I'm gonna set you up with a couple of blankets too. I want you to turn towards the bolster. Yep, and then just walk your hands down and land wherever you land. Let one cheek come down to the side. And if you need, do you want to block under your hip? Feel good. And then you can allow your body to just settle into this twist. It's really hard to get a good twist. You can come on out of that, walk your hands up, and we'll go right into our left-sided Shavasana. So you can go ahead and lie down on your left side. This is the most important pose, I think, in all of yoga, is our final relaxation. Go ahead and bend your elbow. We always do it on the left side um, for a pregnant woman. I'm going to have you just lift your knee so I can give you some support between your ankles and your knees. And I want some support here for your hand if you want to rest your hand. How does that feel, Eva? Now you can go ahead and close your eyes. Lift your head for me. I'm going to take one of these out. How's that feel? That looks better. Um, I'm going to have you close your eyes here. Start to let go of any breathing you've been doing. And just allow your body to relax. Okay, we're back. Uh, thank you both so much. That was amazing. Eva, that was, I was so impressed. That looked, was it as hard as it looked or what did you think? No, it's a lot easier than it looks, actually. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Now, how far along are you? 37 weeks. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, so that really kind of shows that just, I mean, can you do this right up to, uh, to childbirth pretty much? I did for both my babies. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, thank you both. Now, if somebody is interested in the class, how do they uh, learn more? They go to the Lowell General website. Um, there's a health and fitness um, section. There's a get your body moving link and a prenatal yoga link. So look at lowellgeneral.org. We have a health and wellness tab right on the home page. You can get right over to those classes. We offer all kinds of things, uh, just about anything you can think of for health and wellness. So uh, thank you both so much for doing this. We really are grateful. Um, best of luck, Eva. Um, do we know a name or anything? We don't know a name, <laughs> but we do know it's a baby girl. Uh, well, congratulations <laughs> ahead of time, and best of luck with all of that. Uh, thank you all for watching Full Circle Fitness. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks so much.